been attempting to explain what my alien abduction experiences are. Um, some people will sit on Facebook and social media sites and they will talk about last night's encounter with aliens and they will um, discuss good or bad what happened with their missing time. Some people have bad experiences with very regressive beings. Some have um, very good experiences with enlightened beings. There have been uh, people who have I, I don't know if they're getting the message out about the good ones or the better of all in saying what they're saying to the public because it's it's what will help humanity or you know is it to get some money out of this is it profiteering we all write books I've written a few books and you know point the finger at them and pointing at myself but sometimes I wonder if it is just for a uh, show than anything but there if you hear someone saying I am the only one who's ever made contact with the visitors the aliens here on earth extraterrestrials the visitors um, then you're hearing a profiteer who's out to just get the big bucks and become the prima donna, the celebrity. Um, there are a few out there in the limelight who have made such assertions to the public and uh, have suggested that they are the, you know, the cat's meow with, the, 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 we're, we're it, we're the ones, look at us, watch us. Uh, you, you get that with a few channelers who channel telepathic, teleempathic beings uh, who are visitors. You get that with a few uh, mainstream, well, you know, the famous researchers. I mean, I am not in that capacity of the famous researcher uh, or experiencer, because I'm both. Um, I'm... I'm, I'm what I am. Uh, humble me, and I appreciate your sub subscription and listening and following. Uh, but neither will I ever say that I'm the only one. Of all my videos, I don't. I don't make the claim I am the only one in actual contact. I have made the contact. No one else has. I've never done that. But you get these people out there who promote through public relations and media and they spend the money and they say that they're they're it men and women have done this the message may not be direct it could be subtle but it is there they're saying through their artwork of ET hybrid children through their um, the, the general media of the, it seems to be about them and not about the subject matter. I've never promoted myself within the subject. I've never said this is about J.P. Moss or about me. Uh, I've always said that this is not the case. This is about the subject matter, the extraterrestrial presence on Earth which is here. I've been an experiencer and an abductee. All I can talk about is my experiences. I can share my research. I can make hundreds of videos like that. Um, I can put up the pictures I've taken, the videos, all the rest, and give you my interpretation as the experiencer and, and as the researcher. And it just basically starts to look like a one-man reality show. You know, ghost hunters or ghost, ghost guy or paranormal hunters or UFO hunters or whatever on, on this on this edition um, the best researchers the best shows 
never promote themselves. You may come to know the names of these people, but you don't. They don't promote themselves. They promote the work and the experience. That's what's most important in this field is promoting the work and the research. It's not about me. It's not about you know. Not about I'm the only one. There are many like me who just don't talk. Um, I know they're out there, and some of you who watch these videos are, are them, could make these videos too. Uh, I felt called to say this. I felt um, seven years ago that it was important to step out and start talking more vocally about my experiences and what happened. And in 2012, I uh, began making my first set of videos regarding my experiences with an extraterrestrial human hybrid that came to me in the 1990s. And um, she was in the custody of some kind of military unit. She was in great distress, great pain. Now what I'm going to say is going to smash against preconceived ideas about the visitors. It's going to smash against what you've been taught, what you've been told, or what you believe personally whether you've had experiences with them or not, or what you're prepared to believe. Um, you may have been told through some spiritual t church. and I Something I've got to take a stab at. I don't know why this subject matter of UFOs and aliens on Earth has become such a spiritual argument, or why that has run into the spiritual, spiritualist, spiritual churches, Christian churches, um, there's a lot of them that are on the on the doorstep of um, a Christian, Christianized thinking in church, but they don't say they're Christian. They say non-denominational, we're just spiritualists. We know there's ghosts, we know there's an afterlife. But for some reason, um, it, it, it's, it's run into that. I don't know why that has happened, why that's run into that. I know that the, the visitors are very spiritual, and when we go to talk about what they've told us about their belief systems and what they know of the of other higher dimensions, they have the technology to go to. They can go, to go, they can go there to these places while well, not being dead in, in technologies that are mind-blowing. And they can see these afterlives, they, this other, other, very deeply, deep subject matter, very, very esoteric stuff here, uh, but very real. You need to understand, it's, it's not as simple as they just came from planet A and came over to the Earth, planet B here, through space, and that's the end of it. That's not like that. They might have originated from a planet. I've been asked that question. It's kind of a trick question for those who know in the intelligence community. They know that these are not, most of them aren't coming from any planet. They're coming from another dimension, an extra dimension outside the third dimension. And that's where they live now. And um, it's like, what would be the point in going there? Well, higher dimensions make it easier to go around the galaxy. You don't travel the space in the middle. You don't burn as much uh, power getting around the galaxy. You don't, you don't need to do all that. Uh, so we're talking about pretty advanced technologies that still just are just that that part of the subject matter is still a little uh, uneasy for a lot of people to deal with that the aliens are all around you they aren't just uh, up there in that star and they're there in that sky that's a UFO they're all around you and they can step out of the walls, out of your closet, they can, they can do whatever they want, out of your shower, day or night. Uh, but nothing to be afraid of. How do you know that, Jason? Well, you know, again, it's the many, many sides of this. You, do you take the word of the experiencers? Do you listen to what we're saying? Uh, do you run in fear? Uh, I would say have no fear. My, my personal, uh, I can only give you my personal feeling and opinion about it. Don't have any fear. Um, but there's a lot of connection to that. If we start talking about what they believe or what their spiritual t teaching is, 
we suddenly sound like we're extremely advanced Zen masters because we're talking about a higher mind that gave us this information. I've always said it for seven years. I'm just a messenger um, of, of a message given to me. And then that seems to hit on the radar with the spiritualist people uh, who are the love, the, love, the love and light positivity people who say, don't ever, ever have any negative thoughts, and they see me saying things or doing things that may not be in their doctrine and what they believe that I should be doing if I am spiritual-minded and enlightened. Well, I, it's not about me, back up, you weren't listening. It's a message given to me from someone who is. And that someone is an extraterrestrial human hybrid, part human, part alien girl, who told me to call her Benico. And uh, so all of it comes uh, from her. So it's not about me. If it was about me, then you were to judge everything you're, you're seeing on my Facebook page and YouTube on the basis of Jason Moss and what he is or what how he is in his spiritual path as a man, you're going to see a pretty ordinary, a lot of this is going to be what you'd expect. He likes baseball, he, he cusses sometimes, he has an attitude about stuff, gets paranoid, gets frightened, has good days, has bad days, uh, he's like any, he puts his pants on like you do. But then, Benico isn't just a memory in my mind of someone I met long ago. There it goes again, though we're two separate beings with our own sets of psychologies and thinking about things. We are two different in that sense. We are also one and the same. Um, when we met long ago, she connected to me some kind of a, forgive this, this is going to sound really for the lack of a, of, a, of a very decent explanation in a scientific term. Have you ever seen Star Trek where Mr. Spock does a mind meld on, um, on somebody? The mind meld where he says our minds are one and they become one in that moment. Um, she did that with me in what she called, an, uh, using English, she spoke to me in English, and she said in terms I'd understand, it was an energetic connection, a quantum fusing, where now we are of the same energy, we're the same soul, we are the same person, but in two different living bodies. Um, what, that, what that means is, it's superposition theory being, here it is in front of you, um, two particles, the same particle can exist in two places at the same time. And um, so what, what, does that, what does that mean in the sense of her influence on me? What does it translate to? How much of her comes out of me, and how much of me is me, and then, and also very scientifically, how much of me, I wonder, is coming out of her up there where she's at in front of all of her people. You know, there's going to be all of whatever I am coming out of her. In that regard, the. Um, The way that that works out, it, this is this is just what this is about. This is this is where this becomes a long-term observation in science. It becomes something for researchers um, that watch me, follow me on Facebook or whatnot, are more than welcome to do so in these videos. It's a long-term thing. It's it's not. You don't have to believe that this connection's even there at all. But the evidence comes up in 
my own channelings where I've reported messages I feel I've received from her and posted to my Facebook page about the future events on Earth. And these events did in fact happen in exactly the way and time. Uh, and this is very timely predictions. And it's not like I, this is something I got, a message I received, a prediction, and then two years later it happened. This is like within days, within a week. And that's documented. Facebook is very good about that. Whatever you post on Facebook, there's a date time stamp on it right there. So that can't be hacked and manipulated. And so I'm just going to change that. I mean, there are witnesses also who saw when the posts went on my wall. So really, the, the, the videos I'd, I'd like to be doing are, uh, I'll take down about 150 of my old videos. And rather than start a whole new channel, uh, these are, we, we've come past that point. We've now got the Pentagon admitting that aliens are here. Uh, Ex-UFO program chief Louis Eliz Elizondo on CNN, a former military intelligence official who ran the Pentagon secret UFO unit, says uh, in, in his personal view that we may not be alone. Uh, they, they've gone ahead and they've put their people out there. This is the best way they can do it. We can't, we can't ask for more than that. Don't ask for more than that. If they give us more than that, great. But we, people like myself, have already been saying this anyways. They're here. This is going on. Okay, we're not making this up. And my life, my mind, my spirit, my soul, everything about me has been forever transformed from my own personal experience with one of them directly. And in meeting me, you are meeting one of them. You are meeting her. Because what I see and hear, she's seeing and hearing also. Um, I'll take down a lot of videos and start talking about this, because we're now past the point of disclosure. What's more important is to get to know people like us. Don't just reach out to me. Re if, if I'm going to say something to you, I'm going to say, don't, don't just keep looking at my videos and subscribe to me. I'm going to say this to you. Start subscribing to all the video, all the other channels of people like me. Start subscribing to as many of them as possible and listen to us. Listen to what we're saying. There's more to follow in this century, I'm sure of it. But you want a real close encounters of the third kind of real personal experience shared, then listen to people like me what we're going to tell you, what we're trying to tell you. And how I can best describe what is it for me in my life to have this kind of a very deeply intimate, interwoven connection with one of these visitors within my mind, within my body, within my life. How it transformed me, how it has enhanced me and in ways the only impediment would be love interests come along and want to date me and I find because I'm, I am feeling Benico's love purring through my heart all the time her presence and I she is such a great teacher of non-duality, about ending duality, that I don't feel we're two separate beings, but we're one. And what happens is that this dynamic, because this is always there, it's just like the lover without the physical body to stand there and hold. And so a woman jumps in my face in my life. And there have been a few, quite a few. I want to date you. I want to date you. And um, I find, while I have, don't think there's an issue with doing so, it's not as if I'd be cheating on Benico in, in that regard because we're both one and the same in the soul. So I'd be perfectly within the rights to do that. 
uh, to date a, a girl on earth, marry her. The problem is that there's always that that love there I have with her, and I want to share that and, and talk about it. And, oh, by the way, I felt this. I felt that. And it comes with experiences, too. There's experiences. And so then there's uh, people start reporting UFO sightings where I'm at. This is my cat. That's, this is, this is, which one are you? That's Babe. That's my cat. And um, what, then I go out to get the photos, and then uh, you know, I, get, I get called to different places. Um, and in these locations, entities come up in my pictures, as I was told they would. Um, it's important to note also that there's a contingency of people out there, even today, even after the Pentagon's revelation, who are still trying adamantly to discredit people like me. And they're going to say, well, I talked to Jason Moss privately, and he's this way, and I took... If you always consistently, if you're following me, and you consistently get different people coming to you claiming to have spoke to me, and consistently getting the same negative report that don't seem to reflect what you're seeing in the videos and what you get on, on Facebook, um, use some brains and say there's, 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 there's a contradiction here. I mean, if that were really the case, and he really is that kind of person privately, well then, why won't why don't we see some of that filtering? Th why don't we see that on Facebook? Why why would after seven years would would he continuously be saying and doing this? And the message he comes back to each time is non-duality, no fear, no fear. Um, I'll upload this video and do another video, but I'd like to go into more detail about what it's like to walk around uh, with Benico in my head as a constant experience.